Um, yes, actually, this will be my, my job market paper in one or two years. It's joint work with Moritz Goldbeck, who is also a PhD at IFA University, at IFA Institute and University of Munich. Um, yeah, and I'm, it's entitled Zetzer and Africa's Digital Divide. And for today, we are looking at how does broadband internet affect agglomerations. And I, uh, Lukas already said, but it's really um, at an early stage, so comments are, are very welcome. Um, of course, broadband internet is, as a general purpose technology, very um, well understood in, in the literature, at least for developed countries. And there's a lot more to, to look into than uh, agglomeration effects. Um, we also plan to go more further into um, industry compositions on creation of, of jobs. But uh, as a first starting point, um, we decided to look at agglomerations to see general economic growth and population growth through broadband internet. Um, okay. Yeah, why do we look at broadband internet in sub-Saharan African countries? Um, as said, for um, developed countries, the effects of broadband internet is understood quite well. For developing countries, however, there still lacks the literature a lot. And we also assume that there are different effects, as for instance, um, in Southern Africa, broadband internet by, uh, provided by a fixed line um, still has a very low uptake. However, there's a lot uh, going on in the mobile internet market. So therefore, we think that the arrival of broadband internet will have a different effect as it will be mainly used by companies, by white collar firms and not that much by um, private persons, as it is still rather expensive compared to, to mobile internet. Um, as said before, we assume that we'll find um, economic growth and migration. Again, here we assume that uh, migra migration patterns in general are higher in Sub-Saharan Africa and therefore migration might be a more preliminary driver of economic growth in Sub-Saharan Africa compared to, to the Western world. Um, also um, stated before that we assume that um, economic growth will be provided more through um, white collar job creation and in the subsequent events, it will, um, will be driven through um, other jobs created around these white collar jobs. And maybe there's less and productivity gain, again, compared to, to developed countries. And if we see this migration, our idea would also be to look more into the direction of, of the migration. So um, we assume that um, secondary cities could catch up to the primal ones, as the story we have in mind is that um, very educated um, university graduates, which were originally from secondary cities and went to the universities in the primal cities, might return to their hometowns and create jobs there from the startup um, if internet is there. And therefore we, we think of that. It could be one story that secondary cities catch up to, to the primal ones. Um, but of course it could also be that the um, internet have an effect on the urban rural divide and that more and more um, people from rural areas migrate now to the secondary cities instead of the primal cities. Um, 
uh, we have our idea is to look at the exogenous connection with um, submaritime um, fiber cables, which um, were connected in the years from 2009 to 2012 around the continent of, of Africa, starting from, from the east, going south and ending in, in the west. However, we will want also to look at um, the events of the introduction of the first cables in the late 90s and early 2000s, um, also to compare countries which had already a very early but low speed connection with countries which got the first fixed line connections in 2000 to, uh, 2009 to 2012. And we want also, uh, would like to go to the current state of um, the expansion of, of internet in Sub-Saharan Africa by looking at access points within the country which were um, where the network was expanded starting from 2009 up to 2019 and also have an heterogeneous effect by looking at this early adoption have a different effect than um, late adopters um, looking at at the cities which get connected to the internet rather late. Um, for now, our measurement is agglomeration, which we measure by nighttime light data. And uh, broadband internet is measured uh, by access points where we have this geolocation. And these access points are points where the um, um, land um, where the backbone cable within each country um, is um, available to, to connect um, local internet networks um, there. So um, talking about the um, connection of submarine cables, we uh, will identify the effect by a difference in difference approach. Um, comparing agglomerations with an access point with agglomerations without and in the um, comparing before um, they were connected and um, after they were, co were connected. So our treatment is um, country level treatment years as these um, submarine cables were connected to a country and then um, each access point within this country was connected to, to fa um, faster internet. The um, exogenous connection of the submarine cables was already exploited in an uh, AER paper by Jordan Paulson. Um, and the idea is mainly that um, only the geographic location of the countries within Africa um, determines whether you get the submarine cable rather early or rather late as there were ships connect starting in, I think in Djibouti in the uh, very east and then going all around through Africa. And for example, for Nigeria or, or Ghana, there were, was no chance to um, get a faster connection as um, by, by the year the, the ship would have arrived from, from the east. Um, so this treatment are four different years between 2009 and 2012, and it is intersected with the treatment dummy, which determines whether I have an access point or not. And of course, the deployment of, of access points within a country is, is not random. Therefore, we have thought about different um, strategies to, to define what is the treatment group and what not, and the uh, most basic one would be to take, to exclude all bigger cities, the capital and all regional capitals, um, and saying, okay, there's all um, for big cities, there's an economic driver to connect them to, to the internet for regional capitals, there might be political reasons um, to, to connect them. But for other cities, 
um, they're most likely be connected because they are close to to regional capital or they are on the on the way to the um, on the connection between two cities that that get connected. Uh, we'll look how reasonable this assumption is when looking at the at some some maps. Um, nevertheless, the two other methods are um, somehow more more informative. So we will really um, calculate the shortest path um, in the network of all big cities and regional capitals we exclude, and then only allow um, those agglomerations that lie on the shortest path to to be in the, the treatment group. And another approach would be to use the distance to the shortest path from each agglomeration as an instrument um, for um, the likelihood to have an access point or not. Um, so far, we are um, at the moment estimating with the method one, but at the end, I will show also some maps which um, might um, explain a little bit better how these shortest path look like. And also for the control group, it's not clear which um, agglomerations or which cities should be included in the control group. Um, we think that it's important that they have a similar infrastructure, so we um, exclude all cities that are not connected by road. So there we really get rid of the very, very small cities. Um, but there, of course, are more variables where one would think of, okay, looking at this variable makes treatment control group uh, more similar. They're thinking, for, for instance, at only comparing with control groups that get an access point like five years later. So instead of having an access point in 2009, when the, the connection started, we look at access points which were connected in 2014 or 15. Um, so that we would argue that both cities are that important that they get an access point, but maybe one of the cities is more closer um, to, to the sea and therefore be, um, got this access point earlier. Um, with all these methods, we have to be somehow very cautious um, because if we uh, restrict it um, too far, um, we won't have any treatment group left or we won't have any treatment, uh, any control group left. So uh, we are still experimenting what is really making treatment control comparable, but does not shrink the, the observation size too much. So talking a bit about um, the data we are using um, for developing countries, it's always very hard to get good panel data. And especially if one want to look at a level which is um, beyond the, the country level. And therefore, we, we started this project with, with nighttime light data, as this gives us a very spatial exact data um, where we have a panel over in over at least 10 years in, in our case. So we exploit satellites from 2004 to 2013. And in the literature, it was shown that nighttime light data is a good proxy for economic growth and population growth. For developed countries, it was also shown that light intensity is a good proxy for density of of city. Um, yeah, so therefore, again, it's um, a first look into, into the, the effects of broadband internet. And we just want to, to see that there is an effect and um, going deeper into data, we want to um, differentiate between economic growth and, and population growth. Um, then from these um, satellite data, we define agglomerations um, by taking 
lit pixels, which are within a certain search radius as one agglomeration. I will show this in two, two maps I, I provided. But of course, there's also um, alternative data like build up areas from satellite images of buildings, of houses, um, which um, could be used as a, as a robustness check for, for our definition of agglomeration. So we um, overlay these two shapefiles and they, they fit rather, rather well, at least for the medium-sized cities we are, we are concentrating. So here, this is one snip of, of Kenya, um, where the darker area is the, the definition of the agglomerations, and the um, more bright area are lit pixels in 2008. And as a red line, we see this backbone network where access points um, lie on. Um, I brought the, the same SNP for 2013, where can be seen that these agglomerations are, are growing. For instance, we see that here some cities which were not connected before um, are growing that much that they um, that they form one agglomeration in 2013, the last year we have um, satellite data from. And this dark area are pixels which are lit in at least one year between 2004 and 2013. So if we have very small cities that are not lit in 2013, this could be um, towns where migration took off from these towns in uh, more urban areas. Um, but there's also some measurement error as um, the intensity of the instruments on the satellites um, are not that exact to, to measure each tiny light. Um, therefore, we will only concentrate on agglomerations where we have at le least one lit pixel in each year. So that, for instance, these and these agglomerations um, we, will, we won't look at in, in the analysis. Um, on the outcome measures with, with nighttime light data, we have for once the size of the, um, by um, taking the sum over all lit pixels and looking at diff differences over the years. But we can also bring brightness into the, the analysis and look at the sum or the mean of the light intensity we also get for, for each pixel. Um, at the end, our sample will be mainly um, containing medium-sized agglomerations as these big clusters uh, usually do not have in counterfactual. And as said before, it is argued that um, these get always an, an access point because of their economic or political importance. And also very small cities um, will not be in, in our sample as these um, lights are measured instable and with this high measurement error, it's better to, to exclude them. Um, I have a question. Yeah, please. How is the, uh, in the outcomes, how is the size calculated? You say that it's adding up pixels that are light? Yeah, so. Um, Do you have some software for doing this or? Um, yes, it's also um, done in the statistics software. So. Um, from the um, GIS software, we can um, export all pixels, which are um, each of these um, bright areas contains of a number of pixels. And from these pixels, we know in which agglomeration it is. And um, also we have um, a number for the brightness, which is between zero and uh, 63. 
and so we can sum up over all intensity or for um, summing um, all rows which are within one agglomeration. And for instance, you can calculate on this basis whether this, this area is growing uh, yes. by, by, by comparing the size, but right, is, is it correct? Yeah. yeah. So for instance, if you look at one of these smaller agglomerations, um, here there, I would say it's around 10 lit pixels in 2008 and going to 2013, the number might have been, been doubled. This is what, what we're doing. So, so the software is able to go from one, one spot to another and compute um, the size uh, of each and uh, yeah, we, I just wonder how we, it works technically. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we define these agglomerations. So we have a, a base area and the software then calculates within one of these areas, the, the pixels, yeah. And just as an example, how many uh, towns or cities there are? Are there thousands of them? Among? Uh, yeah. I think it's around 8,000. 8,000. 8, yeah. But yeah, then, as, as I said before, depending on the specification, the number of, of cities uh, shrinks a lot in the analysis. All right. I guess we'll come back to this later. OK, yeah. Um, yeah, here's an uh, overview of where each line represents one country and we see the distribution of the light intensity um, where um, countries are very similar. Of course, there's some countries with um, a lot more pixels with a low intensity, but mainly most of the countries also get at least some very bright um, pixels. So it is just to, to say that um, countries are, are different, but um, looking at the distribution of light, they, they are very comparable, at least most of them. And um, the, the size, so the sum over all pixels is also um, at least the, the logarithm at what we will look at is um, very uh, normal distributed. So next I want to, to go over how are access points and big cities distributed to also explain um, what's our idea in the um, estimation and identification strategy. So here we see um, Sub-Saharan Africa. We see the darker spots are the, the access points whereas the green spots are um, those cities which we refer to bigger cities which have a population of at least 100,000 inhabitants and uh, regional capitals. And we see um, from the first glance that um, in, first of all, not each country already has access points. So this is data from 2009 when the first submarine cable was, was connected. We also see that for many countries, um, access points are still rather in the, in the coastal regions. And we also see, um, I think here we have a very good example, um, that usually these cities which we define as important um, uh, mostly get access points and other access points are then built along uh, connection between, for example, here we have some access points being connected um, between these bigger cities. And um, here there's a route of the uh, backbone cable within a country to, to connect two countries here again. And if we, um, Okay, I um, thought there was, a, was another map. But here we see that if the submarine cable lands here, um, 
there is a, a route of access points um, to go um, deeper into to the continent, connecting important cities, but also giving cities an, an access point that are not that important. Um, yeah, then we, we zoomed in um, a bit and here we have these um, red stars, which are um, the actual landing points of the, the submarine cables. Um, here in Western Africa, for example, for Nigeria, we see that really almost every important city get this, this access point. And then there are also some access points to, to connect other cities. Of course, density is, is varying a lot between these countries and um, where Nigeria comparing um, how big it is, there's densities at least in 2009, not yet um, that strong. And um, here we see a route of access points to, to connect a country that is landlocked. But we also see that there are still many countries not having access um, in, the, uh, in the hinterland um, with the internet. Um, but in Western Africa, we also see that these are countries that, that connected with the uh, submarine cable in 2012. So they're, therefore, they are lagging behind a little bit with their um, national access points. Um, here we also have a layer of, of roads. So that can be seen that these access points usually are connected, um, uh, are following um, a road, and that often they, they are at cities which are also um, at the at the cross of, of two, two important roads. Um, yeah, um, picture looks um, for Southern Africa also um, very similar, um, especially South Africa is, uh, um, is the most developed country in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, internet connections were built rather early, therefore the, they also have with access points, a very dense net. Um, but also looking at other countries, we again see that access points are built along roads and are usually between um, two important cities. Um, last, going to, to Eastern Africa, I think here it can be rather, rather quick. Um, we see the same image. Again, here there's access points coming from, from the north and in 2009 still the, the south is, is not connected. Um, yeah. So, okay, and that's the map I want to have before. Um, okay, going um, into the, the analysis, um, we um, compare treated route uh, cities with non-treated uh, cities, so cities with an access point and those um, without one. We see it in the parallel trends, and uh, here I should mention that we are also restricting the, um, the light intensity to be at least 10. So again, that these satellites have some measurement error and um, lower light intensity is not measured um, as exact. So therefore we are taking the sum over all um, um, the, the sum over all lit pixels that have a light intensity of at least 10. And we see that we have parallel trends. Nevertheless, treated cities are somehow um, bigger than non-treated ones. And we see that in the year of the connection to the uh, submarine cable, the effect um, gets in the, uh, rather fast, direct in, in the year of the connection, which is um, not that surprising as usually the, before the, the connection to the submarine cable, 
there are already very some access points, but with a lower speed. And so that's mm, not that important that one has to build up the infrastructure um, when the submarine cable comes, but that who had internet before has now faster internet and this is the, the effect we're seeing. Um, uh, the um, yeah have this different and and different uh, difference and difference um, estimate um, and as we have um, different treatment years between 2009 and 2012 um, we have um, a post dummy um, which is uh, not significant um, in the treated um, dummy we again see that treatment control group have different sizes and we see a somehow significant effect that um, cities with an um, access point are growing at around 13% faster than cities without an access point. Um, on the, um, yeah, we have um, a fixed effect for, for the years. This especially when working with nighttime later, data important as um, the, the for once different satellites each year and the instruments um, get um, a little bit dirty year by year. So therefore a measurement in 2010 might not be the same measurement as in 2013. Therefore this year fix effects um, for the agglomerations, we build areas around each access point in 2009 and um, use these areas as um, fixed effects. So there are around 1,000 of them. Um, and as said before, um, for the um, control group, we select only cities that are connected by, by a road. And on the treated side, we exclude cities that are a primal city, so an economic or political uh, important city. Um, and turn back to the number of cities that are in our sample at the end from 4,000 observations, um, as we have around 10 years, um, around 400 cities remain in, in our sample. Um, we do also a, a dynamic plot um, where we again see that the trend is rather parallel at the beginning um, and not significant at all. Whereas in the year of the treatment, the effect increases. And, and of course, it's um, as seen before in the in the estimate, it's not significant at a 5% level. So it's the, um, the lines for the 5%. Um, but can be seen that in general, it's, it's increasing after the, the connection to the submarine cable. Um, and I have some more minutes. So um, I'm, I'm saying, uh, as I said before, we are planning to um, elaborate, elaborate a bit on our um, identification strategy. So for Kenya, we calculated a graph that connects the green dots, the important cities, on a shortest route. And the next idea would be to use either the distance of each agglomeration to this shortest route um, as an instrument or to select those agglomerations that have an access point and that are um, located closely to the route um, to select those for, for the treatment group by arguing that if the submarine cable lands here at an important city at the harbor and goes to the capital um, Nairobi, um, the most expensive out part of the outroll is the connect the um, 
is the fiber cable and to build it along a road. And then also building some access points is in comparison less expensive. And therefore it is as good um, as random that this uh, city, for instance, uh, gets an access point, whereas it's obvious that the city does not get a, an access point as it is not connected, uh, as it is not on a city, uh, on a road connecting um, two cities. Um, we are still working on this algorithm as for instance, with these three access points, we would also um, argue that they are just there because there's some fiber cable connecting um, those two cities. Um, however, as the algorithm also wants to connect these cities, the cost efficient path um, does not um, use these access points. So here we are still um, working on on the algorithm to, to differentiate between access points that got connected um, randomly by being um, located between cities and by access points that are, um, that are built by, um, by other reasons. Um, yeah, so here maybe it can be seen a little bit better that there's really a, a straight line and almost surely there's a, a road that connects these two cities and therefore these, these access points are built. Um, going into the, the thaws, um, I'd like to zoom in a little bit more. Um, of course, it, one still has to discuss why these two agglomerations get an access point, but these very similar um, cities do, do not get one. So therefore, we are also not um, very sure um, how strong the, the first stage really would be when looking at distance, uh, um, taking distance uh, as an instrument. Um, for Nigeria, the, the image, um, I think one gets a very clear idea how this algorithm works. Um, we also have some problems with the underlying shape file with the roads. Therefore, um, not all cities are, are connected, but I think one gets a very good idea um, that this red line is a cost, a cost efficient path to, to connect um, the important cities. Um, nevertheless, we, we see that there are, again, some cities there's some access points not on, on the path where, again, we would argue there was a planner which wanted to connect those two cities with a fiber cable, and therefore those cities in between um, got an access point, but um, they're, they're, they are not on the cost-efficient cost path. So here we are, it's yeah, set for it's still work in progress, and um, we are looking how to to um, get a, a richer set of um, of the treatment group. Um, and again, for the first stage, we see, especially for Nigeria, um, with very small um, cities, um, that there are a lot of cities um, at the at the um, root we are. Uh, we are painting there, but um, this might um, affect the first stage dramatically as there were um, really no, no access points on this route, but a lot of agglomerations. Um, I think where it might work rather good is, for example, with this agglomeration where we have an access point and this access point only exists by our argument because it is right in the middle between two important um, cities. Um, yeah, and going last to Angola, where we have seen before that the um, access points are still rather in, in coastal areas. And I think, again, one can see how 
the idea of the cost efficient path. Um, here we, we have the problem that many um, access points are built at the coast. Um, also, if there's no for, um, for us classified um, important cities. Um, so therefore, we are not sure how to deal with cities right at the coast that um, got an access point. As here also, um, they are not connected on the road, but they were connected by um, national submarine cables. Um, so may, maybe it's good not to include them as there's obvious um, other reasons to, to connect them if um, they're connected by national submarine cables. And yeah, again, to, to zoom in to have a bit clearer picture as this um, very small city would be defined as a, a treatment and um, that they're um, really close to the shortest path. There are some, some access points, so this might be um, a good example of how our, our um, uh, identification strategy should work. And nevertheless, there's also here access points on a, on a street um, where the um, terminal city is not classified as important city. So therefore the algorithm does not go into this direction. So as said before, we have to, to work on the algorithm. To um, sum up, um, yeah, next step for us would be to apply an IV and especially look in the first stage and how we could, could handle cities that have a very short distance but not having an access point. Um, there are other outcomes we, we could look at. So for now we have the um, sum of, of the pixels, but we could also go a lot deeper into um, the um, light intensity by looking at the mean or by summing over the light intensity instead of the number of pixels. So there are other outcomes that might be um, more correlated um, with, um, as said before, um, density of agglomerations instead of just size of agglomerations. Um, the light intensity could be um, um, cut off at five or at 10 to look at only the, the bright spots um, as we have done it before. And there's also, besides nightlight data, there's also gridded data on, on the population where we could um, use this grid population also as a robustness check and to look at differences in the growth of lights and the, the growth of, of population. And also as I said before that the um, area or the definition of the agglomeration was done by us by um, the pixels, by the lit pixels of the nightlight data. But here as robustness, we can also rely on um, other satellite data that already has defined um, what is an agglomeration. Um, yeah, so I would end here in, in time and I'm really looking forward to, to your comments and your questions. Thank you very much, Valentin. So as usual, we have 15 minutes for questions. Feel free to ask questions or raise your hand. So, um, this is Johannes Fedeke. So, I had a, um, I just, I was just wondering about um, very often when infrastructure projects are rolled out, they tend to be rolled out um, in conjunction with one another or in concert with one another. So, I'm just worried um, or wondering about how you're sure that the that the effect that you're identifying is something that is attributable. Uh, to the broadband expansion per se, rather than, let's say, a, um, a, another infrastructure expansion that happened to be rolled out at the same time and 
um, just uh, as it may be important to expand that infra the, the broadband infrastructure to the cities that you've identified, there may be a parallel set of reasons that make it equally imperative to roll out the alternative, uh, alternative infrastructure uh, at the same time. So um, is there any way in which you've controlled for the presence or absence of other infrastructure projects so as to eliminate um, uh, that it may be due to them rather than the broadband? Um, when you're talking about infrastructure, are you more thinking of um, physical infrastructure like uh, roads, trains, or um, well, airports? Well, yeah, or I mean, just just anything. I mean, there could be it, it could be that it's roads that, as you're working on expanding the, uh, the the broadband, you're at the same time you've got a roads projects, but I it could be anything, um, and yeah. you know that in part is the problem because. Uh, you know, in different countries, it could be different types of infrastructure projects that are being that are being paired with the broadband expansion. Mm -hmm. So it's just a worry that I have. I mean, that because I certainly in practical policy terms, it often is the case that you don't only do one infrastructure project, you do two or three at the same time. Yeah. Um, uh, and so it just, are we really isolating the effect of the broadband expansion or is it just that it's a combination of the infrastructure? So I'm just wondering how you thought about that. Um, sure. Um, I think if we apply these uh, shortest path, we would um, calculate this path, uh, shortest route um, on a shape file with streets that existed in 2010. So we would only identify access points at roads already existing um, uh, or no, if we look at an older shapefile, we would identify access points that were built along roads that already existed before. And as these access points are really a punctual treatment, I would not be worried that much if um, a new road got paved, as we would assume that along this road, we would only find an effect at the location of this access point and could, for instance, in one specification, control only with uh, cities at the same road, but um, with a certain distance to that access point or to any access point to be sure that we are comparing two cities at the same road, but one treated and one not, and with another city, um, with the distance to, to the access point, making sure that if they have fixed line internet, it might be not, not very fast. And, but um, in general, we also uh, want to, to control for, for mobile internet as certainly one other very important infrastructure. So um, here we can um, definitely want to control for um, the availability of 2G, 3G or 4G internet as we assume that with new access points there might probably also be an, an upgrade in the mobile technology that, that is available. Okay, so, I mean, if I can just one short follow-up. I mean, how would that help um, if um, the infrastructure intervention was an upgrading and an improvement of the quality of the road. Um, if we are comparing two cities at the same road, we and taking as the treatment the, the city with the access point and in the control group the city without the access point, we probably would see an increase for both cities because of the better road quality. But we hopefully, or we, we would assume that the increase of the um, treated city is, is higher as there's an additional effect of, of the internet. Can I, um, it's, it's sort of a related question, but it's really more of a clarification. Can I go ahead and ask you that? Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a sort of related question because obviously a lot of that um, uh, transmission network build out 
is accompanied by um, electrification and, and, and road systems. So you've answered part of the, the road system one, but I'm, I'm wondering about the uh, power extension that would make presumably have a very significant effect if it was um, accompanying the, the broadband rollout. Um, but, but maybe it's a, a reinforcing effect. But I was also, sorry, I, I missed the very beginning. I'm having terrible connectivity trouble. So I'm not sure perhaps you described it, but I was there for the sort of first or second slide. You speak about the, the cable and um, you know it's coming up, up the east, down the east coast, and then only getting to a later point to the to the west coast. Um, so I presume you're referring to a specific cable, um, because at the period that you're talking, we've already got, you know, um, up to Sat three on the west coast and wax um, cable being rolled out on that coast. So I'm just, I mean, I, 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 it's it's really just a clarification of what effect you're looking at or whether it's actually a kind of compounding effect on the broadband that already um, exists, particularly on the West Coast countries that you refer to. Um, yeah, we are, um, the effect should be um, the effect of higher speeds that are becoming available so that the um, new connected submarine cables are allowing for a broader bandwidth and in general for, for map more traffic for, for each country. So it's, um, yeah, I think uh, at the beginning I said that we also want to compare um, countries that for which the, um, the new cable, submarine cables are bringing um, internet or fixed line internet that it's not coming from satellites at the first time, but all, also want to look at countries for which the effect is an, an effect of higher speeds. And um, regarding your, your first question, um, unfortunately, we have not good data on the electricity grid. So therefore, we could not um, use it. Um, we are uh, reading a lot for each country how the um, national outroll of access points um, was planned and how it was worked out. And we also have the idea that we could for each country individually um, define um, the route where the, the access points were, um, were planned and then also taking into account the, um, whether in certain countries it was more depending on the um, electricity grid or on railroads in, instead of, of a road network. Um, but as we um, saw on the, on the maps that there's a very good fit on the road network and the existing of, of access points, um, we thought for a very general approach, the, the road network um, does, a, um, does a very fine job. Uh, are there any other questions? Feel free to ask them. So I also have a question. Uh, you actually didn't discuss too much literature uh, related oh, on yeah. the subject. And uh, you mentioned one paper, uh, the one on by Pat Paulson. But apart from that, you didn't mention any other papers for for European or US, US or other countries. And uh, I wonder whether there is actually any literature on this. To the best of my, my knowledge, there is maybe, in fact, not that much on the impact of broadband on economic activity, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I know there are some papers, for instance, that, uh, that assess the, the impact of internet on valuation of houses uh, for UK, but it's more yeah. actually about not really through this valuation of houses, I guess it's more about the valuation of internet to people, how much people value it to have internet mm -hmm. connection, something like this. Yeah. And, uh, but you didn't mention any of these papers. I think it would be good to have this mentioned. And with that respect, <clears throat> also, I wonder whether there's any difference. Uh, again, there's an issue of identification, which was just asked and discussed, but if it would be identified, identifiable, whether there's any difference between um, uh, sort of population with different income levels, 
So, for instance, like, uh, I know, in Cape Town, and there are suburbs which are very rich and they obviously would care a lot about having internet connection and they would be maybe built around internet connection and other infrastructure. Uh, and you see the suburbs growing actually, uh, but maybe poorer suburbs, there, there, would, there would be less impacted or so. So I wonder whether other information on, on, on average income of these towns could also help. Mm -hmm. with, uh, the estimation. Uh, yeah, so I think um, to to get data on on the in income level um, within a country is is rather hard. So therefore, we are trying to get some information on uh, on the firm level. To I think there's two major groups that sign for broadband internet. And this is firms and the, from you mentioned, um, high income families. Um, yeah, we think that uh, through the firms we can identify um, the effect and then with the growing um, uh, suburban regions and slums, this, uh, I think this then are spillovers from more economic activity through the free um, um, broadband internet. And um, regarding the, the literature discussion, um, yeah, there's, I think, a lot of literature in, uh, in the topic of labor economics and um, job search, for example. And um, also, Jörg Paulsen uh, mainly look at, at um, um, is there um, a job um, creation with the um, with the submarine cables, and uh, yeah, there's um, I think also some papers on on GDP in, in general for for developed countries. Um, yeah, so therefore we are uh, mainly focusing on on migration, which I think is also more more relevant in in this context than in in developed countries. All right, thank, thank you for the answer. There's actually uh, one more question or two from uh, Shingi Rirai. Uh, he's posted it to everyone, but I will read it. In your analysis, you focused on connectivity and speed of broadband, but you didn't factor in the pricing of broadband, which seems to be one of the key drivers of digital divide in Sub-Saharan Africa. And second question, majority of South African countries, uh, Sub-Saharan African countries, have more than 50% of population in rural areas, which is one of the key drivers of digital divide. Can you explain how you captured this in your analysis? So one question um, is on prices. Um, I think it's mainly the, the argument that as it is um, that expensive, um, we would argue that it is mainly signed um, by companies and not um, private households as uh, mobile internet is comparable cheaper um, and has the second, the, the second yeah. question is uh, saying that uh, one of the drivers of digital divide um, yeah. is that most of the population is rural um, um, I'm not clear yes. on the question myself but um, yeah or um, cities of interest are these smaller um, cities, the secondary cities. And if we identify the, um, the effect of uh, with the nightlight data and with the population grid, we also have the idea to do some um, rough estimates of where is there a shrinkage in the um, rural population or is there a shrinkage in closer rural location to this um, treated cities than with um, cities with rural area where the um, internet access points are further away. Um, yeah, but um, I think it's uh, one thing we, we want to discuss that if we see migration patterns, where is migration coming from? 
All right, I think we reached uh, three o'clock, uh, but if there are still any other questions, feel free to ask. Maybe the last question. All right, if, if there are no other questions, then I would like to thank Valentin again for your presentation. And uh, uh, as, as before, so if there's anybody who would like to present your uh, project or papers you're working on, then feel free to contact me. Otherwise, uh, next week, we are also pleased to have a seminar which is related to this topic, which will be by um, Shilpa Agrawal from Indian School of Business. She will talk about savings and multiple financial needs uh, uh, in Malawi. So everybody is welcome to join next week. Uh, I'm going to upload this presentation on the ERSA uh, uh, channel. And for other seminars, please check the website. Uh, there are other activities as well as you can submit your papers, of course, uh, as, as a working papers. All right, that's all for now. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the comments. Thanks again for, for organizing, Lukas. Thank you.